Hello, it's Sarek White. Today I'm going to discuss writing OpenXML applications using JavaScript. There are a number of reasons why we want to use JavaScript. First of all, people are making richer and richer web applications that are written in JavaScript using Ajax techniques and such. And these web applications very well may have the need to generate OpenXML documents. In other words, it doesn't make sense to ask the server to do the actual document generation when the rich application can generate the document client side. Sometimes these applications are now being written so that they can work offline or work locally. And these types of applications also sometimes need to generate OpenXML documents. Another scenario is server-side web applications that are written in JavaScript. Server-side JavaScript is becoming a lot more common these days. And of course, Windows 8 Metro-style applications can be written in JavaScript and HTML5, and we very well may want OpenXML functionality in those types of applications. And there's one more scenario that's kind of interesting, which is that sometimes you may want to have a web application that doesn't upload a document to a server, and you can promise the users that their document will not be uploaded to a server. Imagine a company that receives bids, there are confidential bids that are due at a particular time, a bid date and bid time, and these bidders don't want anybody to see their bids before they actually submit their bids. However, the general contractor or the organization that is putting the job out to bid may provide a validation application to make sure that people's bid has all the parts that are necessary in it before they submit their bid at the bid deadline. And in this particular case, they can build a JavaScript application that validates the bid without uploading that bid to a server. This screencast presents a bit of proof of concept code. There are two demos that I'm going to show. First is the canonical load, modify, and save demo. And next I'll show you how to generate an OpenXML document where the user configures certain characteristics of the document in a client-side JavaScript application and then generates a document for the end user. Okay, here's a pretty fancy application. It has an open, modify, and save button. Let's look at this document test.docx. This document has a single paragraph in it. And our code to modify this document is going to add another paragraph to this document. Pretty simple. I'll click the open button. I'll select the document. Now I'll click the modify button. And the web application tells me that the document has been modified. I'll click OK. And I'll click Save. And it gives me a chance to specify the resulting file name. I'll specify test2.docx. And click OK. And let's go look at test2.docx. And there we can see that it does, in fact, have a new paragraph at the bottom of this document. Of course, Having downloaded this document from a web application, then Word will tell us that this file originated from an internet location and might be unsafe. And of course, as you know, you can right click on that document and unblock the document. That's standard behavior and there's no way around that behavior. Now let's look at this little web application. We can enter the title of a document. We can check one of three checkboxes to include an intro, a bio, or include some legal boilerplate text. I'll say that the title of the document is a proposal for adventureworks.com. I'll include an intro and a bio and legal in this first one. I'll click save and it asks me to save the document and I'll specify generated doc is a fine name for that file and I'll click OK. And if we look at the generated doc we can see that in fact the title of the document is proposal for adventureworks.com and there is an introduction bio and legal. And just to show you I'll come over here and tell it to not include legal. 
and I'll change this to generated doc two. And there we don't have the legal paragraph. Of course, this is a little proof of concept that has very simple OpenXML code. You can make this as fancy and elaborate as you'd like to. The key point about this code is to demonstrate the mechanisms that we need to use to implement OpenXML functionality in client-side JavaScript. There are a fair number of moving parts to get all of this working. I'll take them one at a time and we'll talk about them. The first problem that we face when writing a JavaScript application is, how do we get the files from the local hard drive into the JavaScript application? Now, for some time, there haven't been mechanisms to do this because it was deemed a security risk. However, with the increase of very powerful client-side applications written in JavaScript, it's been deemed safe to implement this in one particular way where the user initiates some user interface action. They click on a button or something, and then the browser puts up a file open dialog, and the user browses to some file and then clicks on it and then uploads it into JavaScript. Same thing is true with file writing. There are working drafts both for file reader in this W3C working draft. There is the file reader interface, and this works in Internet Explorer 10. It also works in Chrome with a couple of caveats. And there is the File Writer API. And as far as I can tell, at this point in time, this isn't implemented anywhere. So this functionality is coming along in HTML5, but what do we do in the meantime? Well, as it turns out, there's a way to do this in that Flash has the ability to upload and download files from the local hard drive. So it's possible to make a little teeny shim over Flash that lets Flash do the uploading and downloading, and then we can manipulate and work on those files in client-side JavaScript. This is implemented only in Flash versions greater than 10. Now, there's something like 93% uptake of Flash greater than 10, so this really is not that big of a limitation. So if you're okay with having a very small amount of Flash in your application, then you can upload and download files now. And then when these file APIs get up and going as part of HTML5, you can switch over your code to use that functionality. I found this pretty cool starting point. This is a project called Downloadify, put together by Doug Niner. This was a good starting point, as I said. It didn't have everything that I needed, but it gave me the basic mechanisms, and I wrote a JS download and a JS upload that is based on this code. Given that it was based on this code, I left the original copyright in this code, which basically says that you can use this in commercial products or do whatever you want to do with it. To build these little Flash modules, You'll need the Adobe Flex SDK. I'm using version 4.6. This is a free download that you can get from the Adobe website. You can find it at this location. In the zip file that is attached to this blog post, there is this JS upload download flash source directory. And in there, there are two action script modules. I'll open those two action script modules. And you can see they are not awfully long. The JS upload is 269 lines long. JS download is 175 lines long. So pretty simple little bits of action script. If you go over to the Visual Studio project that's in that zip file, and you look in the JS directory, you can find the JavaScript portions of this little bit of code to connect up to Flash and upload and download files. I'll open them. There's JS upload. It's about 220 lines of code and also JS download. Again, about the same 212 lines of code. This is the JavaScript code that interfaces up to 
the Flash library. This code has a dependency on swfobject.js. I've included swfobject in the project. You don't need anything above and beyond what I've got in this project to build and run the project. The code also has a dependency on this small library base64.js which enables transform to and from base64 encoded binary data. There are also a couple of images that you will need. There's a upload.png and a download.png. The upload.png looks something like this. It has the four images up, mouse over, down, and disabled images for that button. You can customize these per your tastes and per the style that you want for your web application. One last point about this is that these flash files don't work if you run the web application without using a web server. Those flash files need to, based on the security model, be served from a web server. So in this particular case, I'm using Visual Studio to put up a little teeny ASP.NET web application that then runs a server that then can serve up those flash modules. If you want to modify or compile those ActionScript modules, then I'll show you how to do that. Here I'm going to go to the JS Upload Download Flash Source directory. I'll hold the Shift key down and tell it that I want to open a command window here. In this directory, there is a comp for compile.bat. And this uses the Flex SDK MXMLC compiler to compile those two modules. And you can see that I installed the Flex SDK in C colon backslash flex underscore SDK underscore 4.6. You can modify this batch file as appropriate if you install the Flex SDK at a different location. The next thing we need to discuss is that, as you know, OpenXML documents are zip files. So we need a JavaScript zip library. Fortunately, there is this JS zip library written by Stuart Knightley. It's a pretty cool little library. It works really well. It can certainly crack open OpenXML documents, and it can certainly save OpenXML documents, as you saw. One little point about this library is that the only compression that it supports is using the deflate algorithm. If we look in section 10.2.5 of the OpenXML standard, we can see that the compression algorithm supported is deflate, as described in the zip specification. So that's great. This library works perfectly for zipping and unzipping OpenXML documents. Now, it doesn't have all of the support for automatically accessing parts as you find in the OpenXML SDK or even in system.io.packaging, but that stuff isn't too awfully hard. You can go into all of the relevant XML parts and get to the various parts from there. I'll be covering that information in future screencasts. And finally, let's take a little look at the code that uploads and downloads a file and the code to generate a document. So here's the code to upload and download a file. You can see that there's a paragraph with an ID of JS upload and a paragraph with an ID of JS download. And it has the message that people without the appropriate version of Flash will see. Here we include all of the various JavaScript libraries that we need. And down here at the bottom is the JavaScript code that creates those upload and download buttons. This is the code that interfaces to the JavaScript modules that then interface to the Flash modules. You have a fair number of options with configuring JS upload and JS download. I'll be covering these in detail in further screencasts. In the JS upload code, there is this method onComplete that gets handed the file name and the data after the upload is complete. And in the JS download code, 
there are methods where we return the file name. This is the default file name for the file save as dialog box and also a place where we return the actual content to save in the file. We specified that this data is going to be in base64 right here. And up here we can see a little bit of code that shows how to dig into the OpenXML parts that enable us to find the main document part. We have to open this bracket content underbar types bracket dot XML file and then we have to find the part that has the particular content type that we're looking for. Again, I'm going to cover this in more detail in subsequent screencasts. There is information on dealing with this out on the web and of course the standard defines this very very carefully so it's pretty easy. And here's the code to modify the document. There's a little bit of code to open the document. And here's some XML DOM code to modify the document. You can see it creates a paragraph run and text, puts the actual text to be inserted into the paragraph in the text node. Then it inserts that paragraph before the final section properties in the document. And then it does the necessary stuff to re-zip the file and convert it to base64 and put it into this variable called the content. And if we look at JS download, we can see that the data function returns the content. Pretty simple stuff. As I said, I'm just demonstrating the plumbing here. You can certainly make this quite a bit more fancy based on your particular scenario. And if we go look at the generate docx application, there's a little bit of user interface here, an edit field and three checkboxes. And here's the place where the flash button will go. This shares a lot of code with the other proof of concept, the load, modify, save. These two methods don't change. And here's the code to generate the document. One thing that this code uses is it uses a template document that I have put right into the JavaScript down here as base64 encoded binary. I'll be putting together a screencast on how to generate this also. Once it's loaded that document, then it's very similar to the other code in that it's standard XML DOM code to modify the main document part. Here it removes all of the existing paragraphs. Here it adds the text for the title. Then down here, if the include intro checkbox is checked, then it includes the text to include the intro. If the bio is included, it runs this code. And if legal is included, it runs this code. Finally, it saves it as base64 encoded binary, returns that base64 encoded binary. And if we look down here, the data function returns that generated document, and that's what the flash module saves. Well, that's enough information to cover in this screencast. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.